Welcome to Talking Giants presented by Seeky. I'm your host, Bobby Skinner, here with my co-host, Justin Pennick. Today's podcast, we got a, our first interview of the offseason. You know, not interviewing someone that covers another team, but first, like, oh, this is an interview we're doing. Giants running back Antonio Williams, who was the first signing of the Joe Shane era. A really, I thought it was a pretty fun interview, um, especially for someone that, you know, you, you might not know the name of. We talk about NASCAR. I mean, we talk about everything. The guy has a lot going on, so that was a fun, fun interview. We're going to talk about the three new position coaches. The Giants coaching staff has been filled out. Uh, you know, outside linebacker Drew Wilkins, running back DeAndre Carter, and, and then linebacker coach John uh, Agorgu. Justin, how are you doing? How are you feeling at the the first podcast post the Rams winning a Super Bowl? Bobby Skinner, hello. Are we becoming a brand, a show, a podcast that just loves Giants running backs? I mean, Bleeding Blue next week is publishing an interview with Joe Morris. We just interviewed Antonio Williams. And something that Antonio Williams and Sandro Platzgummer, who we interviewed, had in oh, common. Oh, we interviewed Sandro Platzgummer. I forgot about that. We did. And we made both of them laugh. Now, I made Sandro Platzgummer laugh with the doctor and the Ronnie Barnes joke. But we made Antonio Williams laugh more. And I do judge interviews by how often we can laugh together. And we laughed together a decent amount. And I had a lot of fun. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. It was... Uh... Pretty a good Super Bowl. That was a very entertaining Super Bowl. Um, Rams and and Matthew Stafford got it done with the super team that they had. I was really pulling for the Bengals. You know, it's just and don't the Bengals feel like a team, Justin? That it's like they're not going to get back. You know, like I was watching Sports Center afterwards, and they kind of said it too, and it's like, man, it's it's so hard, and it's not to take a shot like, oh, the 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 Bengals were a fluke or didn't belong there. It's just so hard to get back there, and it's like, I, are the Bengals going to get back here? You know, like you look at Super Bowl, like the history of Super Bowl losers, and they usually don't get back, yeah, um, unless they're the New England Patriots. Um, it's like it's just, I mean, even for a team like the Chiefs, who is like, man, they should be set up for the next ten years. It's hard to get back to this game. The Bills haven't haven't gotten to it. It's just the AFC seems loaded right now, and it's like, I kind of feel for the Bengals fans, and the Bengals have like diehard fans who have been following the team forever, haven't won a playoff game in thirty years, and the Rams just don't have the that. Rams have more St. Louis fans who are probably. I, I actually was wondering that. I was asking a friend last night, how do you feel if you're a St. Louis Ram fan? Are you mad and are you pissed or are you happy and you're still a fan of the team so it's such a, a lot of them spot. disowned it because of the way they left st louis yeah you know? it was it was it's su- it's such a it wasn't weird like spot. the nets leaving jersey for brooklyn you know ch- chasing money out in la you know good I- I- i'm happy for aaron donald i'm happy for sean McVay, even though he kind of almost threw away the game by forcing the run even though he's supposed to be this young bright coach that uh, you know throws ball does things right and you have matthew stafford Happy for Cooper Cup. Um, you know, I felt like the Rams. I felt like the Ram. Nope. I know you're. I see you smiling on the other end of the camera, and I'm not. We're not even going to talk about that. Um, <laughs> um, I felt like the Rams as a football team deserved it more, but the Bengals were a more fun team where it's like they're going on a little bit of a destiny run, and we were there twice ourselves going on a little bit of a destiny run. So, yeah, rooting for BJ. It is funny the way that it ended on an Eli Apple. Uh, Giving up a touchdown. No, it's it's not just funny. It's it's poetic justice. And who hates Eli Apple more? Fan bases of teams that he's played for or NFL players? Did you see? I've never seen this in my life. Did you see how many NFL players just went after this guy's neck? Because he goes after their necks. And it's like, yeah. Eli Apple's he like... He deserves it. <laughs> Eli Apple's got the the... Like the dumb confidence and trash talking ability to be like known as a top corner, he just sucks. Like part of getting recognition of his corner is being like a trash talker. Like it's not a position that like you know <clears throat> gets noticed unless you're talking trash. Uh, and he's got all that. He just sucks as a cornerback. And 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 his against mom is Cooper insufferable Cup. Why, too. Why was he against Cooper Cup on a game winning touchdown? Wow, and Vernon Hargraves was the inactive player who ran on the field, which is like such a weird draft, like back to back picks of those two guys. Um, <coughs> excuse You're me, right? got a little bit of a coughing fit. You good there. So hey, it's it's all year. I'm excited for it. Um, we're back. I always, I I will say now that we're doing this full time, it is the not the one day, but it's one of the days where I miss having my regular nine to five job 
because talking with all the like people say you should get the Super Bowl the day after the Super Bowl off. I disagree. I feel like that's the best day to go to work because you're all there talking about the Super Bowl. That's true. Then you just that's the only thing that you do during the day. So yeah, I'm like I you know I did pools. I was I would talk to you know thirty people in a day, and it was all talking about the Super Bowl. And then it's like some are really insufferable to talk about because they don't they just they only watch the Super Bowl. They don't care about football. And then there's the ones like oh we got a connection, man, my man. My man. We're going to have a good time talking to each other in the next visits. Did you think that Stafford could do this? Because you were one to be like, you know what? Good for the Rams for going out to get Matt Stafford. You probably thought it was the right move. But I also know that when everybody was saying that Stafford's, you know, people were putting him in in that elite category, you were like, pump the brakes. So did you think that they were going to do it this year? Around mid-season, yes. I didn't pick them. Uh, in the beginning of the playoffs, uh, I thought the Packers were better, and I, I, I just I picked the 49ers kind of as my like upset team to make the Super Bowl. I think people didn't watch Stafford in Detroit, you know, so you see all the amazing plays, and he's a he is a great quarterback, uh, but I don't think he's like he's. We're not going to look back at this last twenty years of football, and Stafford's not going to come to the top of people's minds, you know. Like he 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 yes did Detroit let him down ops absolutely but he also let Detroit down many a times like he's thrown some really bad passes he's missed guys before, um, so credit to him but like he was on a super team right yeah. like this team almost yes. won it with Jared Goff and this Especially roster with is Von be- Miller oh this roster God. is better than that you know um you know I know Odell got hurt but like having Odell as like your clear cut number two wide receiver is kind of insane to think yeah. about. Um, and people know I don't like Odell, but it was like, put Odell on this team. This is going to work really well. Uh, so, and you know, Cooper and Odell Cup was like a red zone specialist. I, <laughs> that's how he was being used with the LA Rams. And o- Odell is a lot more than a red zone specialist, but that's, that's what it, that's really yeah. been his this main was a role. defensive game as well too. Like the Rams yeah. defense deserves more credit than their offense. Great, great last drive. By, I mean, that no lick throw was amazing. Yeah. So I've always been like, Hey, Stafford is really good, but I just like I've never been the one to be like, oh, he's like totally like been screwed by Detroit. Been screwed by Detroit, but he 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 led to some of their failures as well. You know, they did have some good rosters at times with some good defenses and Calvin Johnson and stuff, um, and they weren't able to get the job done. But you put him on this on the Rams team, and you see what could happen. You know, yeah. you know, at, at the trade deadline, it felt like a lock the Rams were going to win this, yeah. and they did. I thought um that first and goal. When he overthrew Van Jefferson when he was wide open in the back of the end zone, I thought it was over. I'm like, that that was it. That was the game, and Stafford just threw it away. But then the Bengals decided to put Eli Apple on Cooper Cup, and that was the game. So, yeah. So credit to the Rams. We'll we'll be there. It's our time next. Year. All right. This is let's let's talk about the Giants. Um, we have a new patron. We'll wait till the next episode since we spent so much time talking about non-Giant stuff with uh. With the Super Bowl. Justin, before we get into this interview with Anthony Williams, we got three position coaches to talk about. And I want to start with outside linebackers coach Drew Wilkins from the Ravens, Justin. And his his resume was the Ravens outside linebacker coach the past two seasons. Worked uh, as an assistant at that position the two years before that. Was an assistant D-line coach in 2017 and then was just a regular defensive assistant from uh, the four years before that. So he's been with the Ravens since 2013. Again, these position coaches, we're not going to give you the most information in the world on them but they're, because there's not a ton. But this seems like a Wink Martin. Well, this is a Wink Martindale hire. Like, Wink Martindale has been quoted as saying, like, this guy's the, the young star in the coaching ranks that no one knows about. Uh, you listen to interviews about him. He's very personable. And they've got a track record of, you know, developing that outside linebacker spot with the Baltimore Ravens. And this is, to me, is one of the more, uh, you know, O-line coach is the most important position yeah. coach, you know, DB coach, because there's so much attention to detail. Like you can't miss, you can't have mistakes on any play. You're usually you're going to get screwed by them at that, uh, from the defensive back spot. But the outside linebacker coach for this Wink Martindale, Baltimore Ravens type defense is so important because there's so much being asked of these guys. Okay. One is just like, you got to rush the passer. And rushing the passer is a hard thing to do. You know, you talk about coverage being more important and pass rush can win a rep and still, you know, get a touchdown scored on that play. Like, so it's like you got to be consistently good working your hands. So just a technical side of rushing the passer and being consistent, knowing when you can work outside in and not giving up the edge uh, in the run game, doing your fits. Because again, there's going to be a lot more ass out of these guys because of this blitzing style 
of defense, and they're going to have to drop back in the coverage. Like their coverage, like you're going to have to have coverage skills. So this is a important hire for this Giants coaching staff. And Wink Martindale, a guy he called a, the young star, no one knows about, got his guy. So this is this is the hire out of uh, out of these three guys that I'm like, ooh, I really like this one. The other two, it's, I kind of am neutral on. This was a lateral jump that he made. Yes, Ravens let him do that. Contract, I, I think his contract was up. Oh, there we go. Okay. Yeah, if I had to make a power rankings of most important positional coaches for the Giants right now, when you just consider, you know, the important coaching positional spots, it's O line coach, QB coach, right? I would either put secondary coach or outside linebacker coach as like third. I probably would give the edge to the edge coach, you know, no pun intended, because I'm especially looking at what the Giants may have he- heading into next season. You know, we, we talked about it last episode when we kind of talked about Wink and what his addition means as defense coordinator. Well, what does that mean for the edge room? Does that mean that we're not going to prioritize edge rusher as much because Wink Martindale feels that he can just work with athletes. So how is this guy going to be able to work with whether we prioritize edge rusher, whether we get get a guy in the first round, or if we just bring on a bunch of athletes who are very raw, or we're still kind of rolling with some of the guys that we had last year. We signed Lorenzo Carter to approve a deal. Ellerson Smith is still here. Quincy Roche is O'Shane Zimenez on the roster. Or are we going to roll with these guys and we're going to, you know, we're going to have to make the best out of that. So this is a very, very important positional coach hire. Um, Because there's a lot on the line. Because these guys, they have to be effective in what they are asked to do in Wink Martindale's system. Not necessarily be overly productive, but do what they're asked to do. And this is a position that they're going to draft often and in the later rounds. You know, we've seen the Ravens, you know, kind of crank throughout, not let guys walk, uh, you know, use it. And then, okay, now we're we're, we're, we're letting Ty's Bowser be our, our, our main outside linebacker and drop in the coverage. We're going to let Yannick and Gawkway walk. We're going to let Matthew Judon walk. So it's, it's going to be a position that we're probably going to have some rookies at, one, because of what the Ravens have done coaching-wise uh, with that position. And two, it's, it's, uh, it's a very weak position on the Giants where you essentially have Aziz Ojolari and really, you know, Quincy Roche. Nobody else proven, no. Yeah, like Quincy, Ro- you know, Quincy Roche is, is the, you know, Lorenzo Carter may be back, but he's a free agent. Oshane Zimin is no. Um, so it's it's a position that's going to need to be coached up really well. Yeah, uh, really. Because it's going to be relied on, and they're going to have to be asked to do a lot in this in this Wink Martindale defense. And also um, important to note, we were talking about this before the show, we didn't have a formal outside linebacker coach last year, but Jeremy Pruitt was that. Yeah, I mean, he was when they did interviews, Jeremy Pruitt was the one that was being asked about the outside linebackers, even though he didn't really have the official title. And then the year before that, Brett Bielma was the outside linebacker coach who we were very impressed with. They did a yeah. little, didn't do a lot, but he did some good things with a bunch of late round, no name type players. Yeah, ragtag you know, players. Yeah, you know, uh, Carter Coughlin, Cam Brown, Trent Harris, Nico Lelos. Yeah, Nico Le- like had had <laughs> Nico Lelos versus the, the offensive line we just saw in the Super Bowl. Like, you know, people remember him for that interception in the Bengals game. I put together a clip. It's like, here's like six plays of him just winning. And this was against Jonah Williams, who's a pretty good left tackle. It's the rest of the Bengals O-line. That yeah. that sucks. Um, so, yeah. So he, And it was always funny to see like Brett Bielma, who has been a head coach at some big college programs, Arkansas, Wisconsin. And it's like, okay, you have six, not even linebackers, outside linebackers that you need to fo- put your all your focus on. Um, Instead of 70 kids. So... Drew Wilkins is the one out of these ones that seems the most important to me, even though the next one, the linebacker coach is important too. Like, and the Ravens defense, this is going to be important because you're going to be asked to do a lot in coverage. And they, they got coach John Agorogu. I'm pretty sure I pronounced that right out of Vanderbilt. Uh, this guy, Justin, he actually has experience with Brian Dable and Wink Martindale. He was the oh. Vandy linebacker coach this past year. The three years before that, he was the Bills assistant uh, linebacker coach and quality control the year before that. And then he was with the Ravens as a defensive assistant from 2015 to 16. That's where the Wink, Wink Martindale wasn't the D.C. there, but he was uh, a position coach. And then was with Missouri State as a wide receiver coach and, and Missouri as a G.A. the few years before that. So uh, uh, a fairly young coach. Um, connections with Dable and Wink. So, you know, I wonder I wonder who brought that name up per, uh, first. And also, it wasn't Rob Bryan. I know I got a lot of people asking if Rob Bryan was coming. Um, Giant Insider lied. He's not coming to the Giants staff. Tough. Tough. Who do you think brought uh, this guy to the table first? Wink Martindale or Brian Dable? Brian Dable worked offense, but he's worked with the most recently. 
Wink Martindale work with him hand you know hand in hand. I would think Wink. That's just my guess. Yeah, me too. That's my guess. You know, Dable, I would presume that maybe Dable would maybe reach out before Wink was hired and then maybe give him an interview then if that was the case. But my guess is Wink. Um, and kind of jumping around, Jerome Henderson confirmed here, right? He's not going to pull no Patrick Graham and leave us yep, and break our hearts? he's here. And Mike Trier is the assistant DB coach. All right, cool. So, um, oh, Speaking of linebacker coaches, three minutes ago, breaking news, Justin. Ooh. This is this hurts a little bit because it's two guys we love working together. You gonna lie to me? Because I feel like sometimes you do this and you like prank me. No, because I have to quote tweet it because this is actually kind of. The Raiders have reached agreement with Antonio Pierce as their linebacker coach. Sources said the former wow. Giants Pro Bowl linebacker is back in the NFL on the coaching level after spending the last few years as a defensive assistant with with Arizona, Arizona State. State. Yes, yeah, so he suddenly and I think kind of maybe abruptly left Arizona State and the people like yeah well, what's they had going a lot on? of recruiting stuff going. Uh, like they had a lot of allegations against Arizona State, like the way that I don't know, I don't know the details of it. I just know that. So now Patrick Graham, Antonio Pierce, and Joe Judge walk into a Vegas bar together. Well, Judge is on the Patriots, which we didn't talk oh, about. Excuse actually. me. Yeah, I thought. Why did I think he was on the Raiders? He's not on the Raiders. Yeah, we didn't touch on that. He's an offensive assistant, which he might I be find like the it, offensive coordinator, which is kind of wild. I find it to be funny. I think he wanted him. His family wanted to go back to Foxborough. Yeah, hope the Patriots' offense is really good. By the way, that is something that I do genuinely hope, because it would be even more of a middle finger to Mara about you really fucked him over with Garrett. Yeah, it'd be interesting because he's only been a wide receiver coach, and their offenses for the Giants, you know, they were very Jason Garrett influenced, but they were horrible. Yeah. <laughs> so that. That was, I don't know. I'm very, that's like, I hate to say the word interesting. I hate when beat reporters like quote tweet a news and say interesting. It's like, come on, can you like add some thoughts to it? But that really is my, like, that's, that's interesting. Yep. Um, so. Now that uh, judge is here, I can outwardly root for his success. Now that judge is not here, I can outwardly root for his success. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'm definitely rooting for Joe Judge. He's a guy I have no ill will towards. Yeah. Uh, Do we have so, one more positional coach? Yeah, but anyways, he worked with Vandy. Um, that's what it is. Running there back coach DeAndre Carter. Texas, can you hear that music? I can hear something, but keep going. It's really loud. I don't care. It's running back coach DeAndre Carter. Uh, b- bumped around the league a lot the last three years he's been with Texas Tech. And you would think, Justin, oh, Texas Tech running back coach, they don't run the ball. They ran the ball more than they threw it this past year. And mm. the years before that, it was like uh, a 55-45 split, uh, you know, favoring favoring the pass. So, okay, they've actually ran the ball a lot. But he's bounced around. at Utah. He was a Utah State running back coach where he coached Darwin Thompson, who's on the Chiefs, Mike Kafka connection there. UNC running back coach, Purdue, Syracuse for a few years, New Mexico. Illinois for a couple of years, U of E, and then back at New Mexico, Miami, and then Miami of Ohio a few years before that. He's bounced around a lot. He's been only in the college coaching. He's been coaching college for 21 years. Um, again, there's just not much info on him. I see him, you know, I've, I found a clip of him work, you know, teaching the the three-step drill, the th- you know, the three-step cut drill, but I'm sure a lot of running back coaches do that at, at all levels. Uh, so, Deion J. Smith, he's got... Hey, Antonio Williams, he's got to work with him. Saquon Barkley, if he's here, he's going to have to... Like, Saquon Barkley needs coaching. Like, he really does. Yeah. Um, and More mental it, than physical, in my opinion. Yes, yes. So, uh, it, it's... It's it's you know what I think I think it's gonna be better than Burton Burns who looked like he was gonna fall asleep halfway through interviews and was weirdly old to be on an NFL coaching staff. Yeah, that that's my thing. Where if there's one positional coach where I'm extremely okay with having a college coach there, it's the running back room because how often do you see running backs from college? They are very pro ready. I think it's the most one of the more pro ready positions out there. Um, where running backs can kind of just step in and have a good transition, especially if you, know, you got a little bit of an offensive line, right? So I do think if Saquon Barkley is on the team you know, this upcoming season, which I don't think he will be, but if he is on the team, I want somebody that speaks his language. 
I want somebody that can climb inside of his brain because that's really what we need. We need somebody to get inside Saquon Barkley's brain. And the positional coach that I was most critical of this year was the outside linebackers um, and, and, you know, what I guess Jeremy Pruitt was doing that was different from what we were doing in 2020. And um, the running back room, you know, not, not, not being able to get inside Saquon Barkley's brain and not getting enough of those big plays and not uh, just basically just being really, really bad. And it wasn't just solely the offensive line. So, and it seemed yeah, like Jody Wright it. was kind of taking over as the running back coach towards the end, Yeah, too. Yeah. You know, like Saquon referenced him, you know, when Burton Burns got COVID and Saquon referenced him in the last game of the season, like Burton or Jody Wright talking to those guys. And Jody Wright was like a true blue Joe Judge guy. Um, who's, he's now the South Carolina tight end coach, so maybe we can uh, get some tight ends from South Carolina in the in future years. Yeehaw. Uh, and so any other takes on DeAndre Carter before we send it to this interview? No. No. We got an ad to read, though. I, we do, Justin. Don't don't act like I forgot. Okay. Uh, uh, SeatGeek, talking points. Deliver talking points with as much personal flair, language, style as possible. Copy below is for example slash guidance. Okay, let's figure this out, st- stuff out, guys. Here's some flair. Today's episode is sponsored by SeatGeek. Live events are back, which means you can get $20 off tickets at SeatGeek with promo code GIANTS. If you don't know what SeatGeek is, there's a ticketing app that makes you buying that makes buying tickets super simple. We've I've got the app on my phone. And here's something I want to say to SeatGeek. I have always wanted to go and sit at a box at an Orlando Magic game. Now that was inspired by Justin getting go to the in Giants a box game. in a box like in a suite. Box? Oh, in a, a suite. suite. Oh, okay. yes, in a suite. You guys own these seats, so please hook me up, SeatGeek. Like you know how much of an ad that would be if you. And again, it's the Orlando Magic. I'm not asking for yeah. That's huge. You know, that's huge tickets. marketability. Orlando Magic is huge marketability. But no, I'm saying if me going to an Orlando Magic game with my friends. And like whooping it up and having a good time and tweeting from it and you know saying Seeky bought us the tickets that will be a good uh, ad for you. That'll be a good way to get into the good graces of the Talking Giants listeners. Uh, other people have not been able to deliver on that, so deliver on that. I want to go. I want to. You know, their their tickets are very cheap, so I want to go sit in a suite with my friends. Uh, let's. You say, don't want to sit in a box where SeatGeek will provide you with a. I mean, it's got to be a big cardboard box, but I think it could happen. You don't want to sit in a cardboard box at an at an Orlando Magic game. There's people sitting sitting in boxes outside of the stadium at the Orlando Magic game, um, homeless. So please, SeatGeek, I would love you to do that. So whether it's football, concerts, basketball, baseball, festivals, or more, SeatGeek puts tickets from all over the web in one place to make buying simple. Uh, insert even teen concert that you are excited to see be back. How about the Orlando Magic, SeatGeek? Um, I'm killing this ad right now. SeatGeek rates every uh, every ticket from 0 to 10 to make sure you are getting a good deal. Green means good, red means bad. Even colorblind can figure that one out. Every ticket on SeatGeek is backed by their buyer guarantee, so you can shop for tickets with confidence. That's, we need confidence, guys. We need confidence in our lives. You do things with confidence, you get a lot of things done. Don't worry, we've got the hookup. Use code GIANTS for $20 off tickets at Seeky. That's $20 off your first purchase with promo code GIANTS. Make sure you click the link in the description to download the app. Code GIANTS for $20 off your first Seeky order. And now, Giants running back, Antonio Williams. All right, we now welcome on our first player interview of the offseason. You know, we try to not do too many. And especially, especially we don't try and bring in new hot new guys, but... We have the first signing of the Joe Shane era, running back Antonio Williams. Uh, a lot about him. We're gonna talk. We're gonna end up talking NASCAR in a football interview. Antonio, how you doing? And uh, how's your first couple of weeks on the job for the Giants? Yeah, I'm doing well, man. Uh, glad you guys invited me on. I'm happy to be a New York Giant. Excited to get to work, and uh, I can't wait for what's to come for us. So there's, you know, there's a lot we want to go through, but you know, want to start with the football. And when you when you got signed. You know, it's the first Joe Shane signing, so we're gonna, you know, we're gonna dive into it like we do everything. But there's reports that, like, hey, you had options, you know, to go back to the Bills. What, what made you choose the Giants over the Bills or other teams? And is there like a relationship with Joe Shane that was already there, that, or is it just kind of like, hey, he he brought me in, and this is where I wanted to be? Yeah, no, it was. Uh, I did have some other options, and I and I did explore them a bit. Um, you know, I had the opportunity to go back to Buffalo, and I'm thankful for that. Um, but you know, Joe, Joe, uh, made it known that he wanted to kind of bring me with him. Um, so we, we did that and I thought, you know, what better place to, you know, restart for me 
than the New York Giants. Um, you, you got, for me growing up, New York Giants, you know, I saw Eli win Super Bowls and all of them, and, you know, Ahmad Bradshaw and Plexico and all these guys. And, and in my mind, you know, that's New York Giants for me. Um, you got these these great players and you got Super Bowls. So um, for me, it was a, it was an easy choice to, to join Joe in New York and, and uh, try to help him rebuild this thing. Was was part of it opportunity? Because listen, we 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 do like film stuff. And so I was like, you know what, let me, you know, he doesn't have many carries in the NFL, but let me go through him. So I went through that Dolphins game and not to toot you up too much, but you balled in that game. You were running through guys like you had a couple touchdowns, like you played really well in that game. And, and in my opinion, better than like the depth at running back that the Giants currently have. Obviously, it's a long offseason ahead. But like, was that frustrating to have to close out that 2020 season and then 2021 not get playing time being like, hey, when you let me play a team that was fighting for the playoffs in the Dolphins, I played well. And then not to get that opportunity in 2021, was it like, I need the Giants for that opportunity? Yeah, I think I think as a professional athlete in general, you know, if you can get a better opportunity or you think you have a better opportunity somewhere, I think you, you take that. And uh, I do. I did think that, um, you know, I could have a better shot with the Giants. I think that I could could play a bit more than I did in Buffalo. Um, and, and my mindset is, is try to be the best, man. You know, I'm a guy that, as you know, I do a lot of things and everything that I do, I try to be the best in, um, including football, you know. I wouldn't be where I'm at with all my other things without football. So uh, for me, yeah, it was it was opportunity and a chance to to reach the football level that I think that I can be in. I'm a big stats guy, and here's what you could tell your friends or even your your coaches. You know, so it has to be some kind of an NFL record for a running back to average over five yards per carry, have half of his first downs also be touchdowns, and also have a hundred percent catch rate as a receiver. So that that's your that's the big talking point that I'm having about you heading heading into this year. Um, I love it. I love it. <laughs> so your profile picture has you wearing number four. First of all, awesome, dope edit. And I know yeah. you you work with a lot of other content creators, and I'm sure you know they all know Premiere, Photoshop, everything like that. So it's dope. All right, but I have bad news for you. I know, I know. I already know where you go. There. Did you know <laughs> that number four is retired by the Giants now? I was a big TJ Yeldon guy in high school. And I think, you know, I'm 23, you're 24, so around the same age. So I was like, yes, I, number four is such a dope running back number, and you can't get to wear it. Did you know yeah. that? Yeah, well, after after everything started going down, I talked to the staff, I realized it. But, you know, it's a cool it's a cool picture. We'll rock it for now. Um, Love it. But the new number will be coming soon. I've talked to him. We'll, uh, we'll get that out there. So We got to workshop it. What are we – like, is, is 33 available, Joe? I don't know. what. What's... You mentioned Bradshaw. I don't know if we got a 44 on the roster. I don't know, man. We'll we'll see. We'll see. I don't want to put you on the spot. <laughs> no, I really I really have no idea number right now. But 404 was so dope and it looked good on me when I yeah. when we did the edit. And I was like, you know, might as well rock with it for now. But any number, I'm I'm not a big picky number guy. Just I just want to play ball. This might be a talking giants record for the word dope on a podcast. <laughs> um, dope is dope you ever smoked. How how did you get? <laughs> let me jump right into it. Um, <laughs> How did you get into NASCAR? Like, did you grow up a fan, or was it like an opportunity? And why am I gonna? Why do I have to root? For, do all Giants fans have to root for Joe Graff Jr. next weekend? I would love for you guys to root for. Well, in reality, I have a, I have multiple drivers. Uh, Joe was the one that I was introduced with last season, um, and I, I in, increased my role this year with uh, FGR Excel, which is a uh, marketing team. Um, so I'm actually the director of business development for FGR Excel, um, and I manage five drivers now. So. If you guys can all support all five of my drivers, that would be great. But do you uh, have yeah, any in the truck race? Yeah, I do. Well, well, I don't. I don't think Chase is. Is Chase racing? I don't know. Chase Purdy is one of my guys as well. Um, so I don't. I know he's racing Xfinity with us. I can't remember. Uh, I'm still getting back into the swing of things because coming out of season, season, and the rest of the team handled it. So, but uh, yeah, Chase obviously did trucks last year. Um, but yeah, I'll be in Daytona with Joe. We've got Armani Williams as well. Uh, Chris Hacker in the trucks. Chris Hacker will be racing the trucks for us. Um, yeah, so I grew up in North Carolina, small town, right outside of Charlotte. I grew up watching it with my granddad and my granddad passed away about two years ago now. And that's what, uh, drew me to it. I was like, I want to do something to honor him. I, and it really was wild. I put out a tweet, uh, saying, does anyone have any NASCAR connections? Uh, NASCAR retweets it and the rest is history, man. I just, it just blew up. So, uh, I got in and I've been doing really, really well in, in NASCAR. So I'm excited about that. It's pretty cool. I, mean, I grew up in a racing family. Like my dad raced, I raced as a kid and then got into football later in life. I'm an hour south of Daytona, but every year 
It's a tradition. Me and my brother, we go to the truck race. You can bring your own beer into the races, which we found out, which is like, that's, that's, you know, your, your ticket is basically free at that point. And then here's a, here's a, here's a, a trick for everyone. Everyone goes to the middle at Daytona. They all want to get towards the start finish line. Mm-hmm. Go all the way to turn one. Cause you can see the turn track one. the best from there. And you get an entire section. I mean, we basically yeah. have a, you know, we have a party in turn one, you know, like, you know, four or five of us every year. So I'm going, were you uh, there last year? Yeah, yeah. I was I was actually in turn one, man. We had our um we had our motorhome in turn one, so we might. Oh, have so you like, you were inside the track. I was. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. In yeah, the I was inside the track. Gotcha. So maybe if, maybe if you make it to the stands, we'll uh we'll connect and uh. Oh yeah, absolutely. Do, do some nasty. So, but I every year before the race, we just go through the list. So it's like, all right, let's pick let's pick our driver. Let's all bet twenty bucks on a win. So I'm definitely picking uh either Chris Hackard or, or Chris Purdy. Um, I love it. I this love year, it. you know, I'll, I'll do a little more research going into it so like what are your plans for for daytona this year uh, yeah just go down and, and enjoy the race see the new car we uh, got a really big deal for joe this past year uh where we partnered with Stuart haas and uh, roush yates um so we'll be running forward uh which will i think it'll put us in a spot to uh, win some races put us in some better positions than last season uh, we finished the season strong last year finishing i think uh it was 11th or 10th at talladega and then uh another top 20 finish. So we were doing well at the end of the season, just trying to let that roll forward and uh, see what we can do in this forward equipment. So now you can join, uh, I, I, you probably never thought that you would be in the same sentence as these two guys, but uh, Michael Jordan, <laughs> Floyd Mayweather, Antonio Williams. I mean, just na- <laughs> former athletes coming in and being investors in NASCAR. And I love it. I love it. Yeah, I love it. So I, I actually talked to Jordan one time race in, uh, at Watkins Glen. And that was that was pretty cool just to be able to talk to Michael Jordan, being a UNC guy myself. So yeah, I was gonna say a couple UNC guys who you know enjoyed NASCAR and are professional athletes. I I wanted to ask that: who was the best like player besides yourself on that UNC team? Because they had some on the offense. You know, I'm a big Deami Brown. Like I love Deami. Seeing him go to Washington (laughs) hurt me because I love Deami. You know, Daz Newsome, Javante, uh, Michael Carter, and and even some other guys who are, are younger for them right now. Who was like the guy when you were there? Dude, we had so many guys. You know, we had the three-headed monster in the backfield, me, Vontae, and Mike. Uh, the Ami at the receiver. We had Daz at the slot. We had Bo Corrales going up in the red zone. Sam Howell kind of conducted it, though, my senior year. And I got a – you know, the guy was young then, but I, I think he just kept getting better. Uh, and I think everybody saw that. But uh, you, when you got a quarterback that can that can move those many weapons around, manage it, I think it was, I think it was Sam. Yeah, and that's when Mac Brown came in. I remember watching I'm a Miami guy watching that Miami UNC game, and I was like, "Man, this true freshman Howell, like he's gonna play in the NFL. He looks like he's gonna yeah. play in the NFL one day." I know he's not the biggest dude, uh, but he looked. I do have to bring this up. You can either use this as a way to make a relationship, or you can try and avoid it at all costs. Do you? Does, are you? Do you feel a little ashamed that Daniel Jones had 160 rushing yards <laughs> in the UNC Duke matchup in 2018? Look, I remember that game, and I'm like, God, can we tackle this guy? Like, he's he was just crazy. going. It was. <laughs> I mean, he was running wild on us, man. But no, I mean, that's that's past. Obviously, it hurt then. But uh, happy he's my teammate now. I trained with Daniel in the offseason the past few years, so we have a relationship there. So that's that's pretty dope. Okay, who was like uh, the guy you guys trained with? Daniel Boone, believe Boone. Yeah, we had Anthony Boone. We had him on Anthony the, uh, Boone. Anthony Boone. Yeah, yeah. we had him on the. Sh- Probably the most mad Justin's ever seen me. We interviewed oh Anthony Boone, and it was when we first started doing some Zoom stuff, and Zoom just totally erased the interview. So we had a oh, nice no. twenty-minute interview with Daniel Jones trainer. Who oh, runs wow. a Who runs a faster in a straight line? You were Daniel Jones. <laughs> That's a good question. I got, actually, I, I do I do know I did get clocked towards the end of the season at twenty-one. So I think we we're right at we're right at each other because I know he hit what he hit like twenty-one two. Yeah, he hit on yeah. the on the eighty-yard run where he tripped you know <laughs> i think he has the fastest time for a qb running in the nfl you know really like, is lamar faster than daniel jones yes but like daniel jones went he he just didn't let up at all and yeah ended up tripping scored a touchdown <laughs> but it it, it it worked out all right yeah. uh there's uh some ohio state guys right justin mm-hmm, yeah yeah i talked to uh i talked to justin hillier when i was there signing and everything um i know we got billy billy price uh, played with all those guys, so it was good to see some familiar faces on the player side as well. Um, I know we just signed Davis Webb um, from the Bills as well. Yeah, so. and the punters. Joe Shane is three for three on uh, <laughs> on on Bills hiring. So, you know, 
I love it. Can I we bring, it. you know, Mitch Trubisky over as a backup? Q? I don't know. They say Davis, <laughs> Davis Webb, we went through the, the Davis. He was supposed to be the heir apparent to Eli at one point, but that, uh, now, now he's going to be the the guy that trained Daniel Jones. We talked with uh, someone who covers the Bills yesterday, and he was he spoke really highly of him. Yeah. Um, who was your team growing up? Growing up was the San Diego Chargers because I was running back and I enjoyed Danny watching Thompson, yeah. LT man. Yeah, I enjoyed LT. Twenty one was actually my favorite number, man. And I ended up being a little bigger than LT. So <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, you run a you run a you you run. Per, I mean, L. L- LT was more about speed. You you run a little yeah. bit tougher. I would say you a run a little tougher, tougher than LT. A yeah. Tougher, yeah, yeah. We yeah. interviewed Roman Oban, who played O O line for uh, that Chargers team when they first started rolling with Philip Rivers, mm-hmm. or with Drew with Drew Brees still. And he's like, man, the back like the scout team offense was unreal. You had like Vincent Jackson as a backup, Michael Turner, Philip Rivers. You know, the team was just filled with talent. Like it's a shame they didn't go a little further. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. you think I, I think that's a lot. It's a lot of guys around the league that. Uh, when they get their right opportunity, they could be a, they could be a significant player in this league. And you know, timing in this league is so is so important, dude. If you get to the right spot at the right time, you know, you can you can make some noise. And you know, I think that's what everybody kind of searches for. Philip Rivers, first ballot Hall of Fame. Yeah, I think so. Better than Eli. No. Okay, all right. We're work, we're working on your Giants PR. We're we're, no, we're, we're no, just no, throwing, we're throwing shots at you to get you ready for some Giants uh, for New York no, media. Man. <laughs> you, you you want you want a Twitter tip? You're you're very savvy on social media. Um, just tweet out Eli, and Eli? watch it watch it get it watch it get a thousand likes. Half of Giants content creators do that on their own. Just just, just like, Eli. I love Eli Manning. Just, just... <laughs> and then t- thousand likes. All right. <laughs> <laughs> now this one is it's a little self interest, but we have a slogan called "Talking Giants First the World." And if you mm-hmm. ask Nick Gates, the most interaction he ever got on a tweet was tweeting "Talking Giants First the World." So. I'm okay. not going to tell you to do it, but just I'm not going to tell you not to do it. Hey, we might have to make something happen after this after this interview. Yeah, please. we'll put this out on Tuesday, so maybe maybe Monday maybe Monday we could get that out and, and, some, and some anticipation. <laughs> perfect, perfect. I love it. All right. Well, enough uh, promoting us. We're going to continue to promote you. <laughs> um, you're a man of many talents, many things that you do. So, Ancient World Gaming, AWG. Yeah. You're the captain. You're known as AWG underscore Bean. Um, I grew up with YouTube, and part of the reason why. I'm here kind of sitting behind a microphone. I'm really bad at video games, but I watched content creators on YouTube play video games. Mm-hmm. Um, so tell me a little about a little bit about AWG and Ancient World Gaming, and you're the captain creator of that. Tell me about that, what you do, and the team that you got. Yeah, so uh, Ancient World was created last offseason, um, and I was over my one of my good friends on the Bills, actually, his house, Christian Wade. And I, it was when FaZe Clan, I had seen FaZe Clan get on the cover of Sports Illustrated. I was like, dude, I feel like I can build a team. Like, I don't know if it'll reach phases level, but I feel like I can build a team. So literally that day, I would go in his backyard and I was like, hey, C Way, could you um could you uh record me really quick? I'm gonna say some things. And from that point on, Ancient World was built. I put it on TikTok, Instagram, all that stuff. Um, then I started watching literally, I sat for hours and I'd watch random people on Twitch. And I was like, I saw how they interacted with their with their fans, I saw how they played the game, if they were good. And then I'd find their social media and I'd reach out and I'd be like, hey, I'm building, I'm Antonio Williams, NFL running back. I'm building a team. You know, I'd love to help you be a part of it. Um, and that took off like very quickly. Uh, it blew up kind of good that those first two months. Uh, we got some big time endorsements. Um, Chad Ochoncico shouted us, us out. Uh, we got a uh, sponsorship with Advanced. I don't know if you know Advanced. Um, we got a... Uh, some more we got we got so much stuff man and it's just just keeps rolling we got a we're building our uh call of duty official official call of duty esports team now uh we're also we have an esports league uh nascar racing league coming um what is else? it is it i racing or is it like the console this, is, this was the console because okay. i racing is coming trust me everything i'm just kind of it's kind of like steps and i'm just kind of taking and we got to continue to reach certain milestones in order yeah. to initiate those but we're moving at a good pace and I'm excited and we got some, some new players coming in that I'm going to add and uh, some, some bigger sponsorships. So, you know, we're in, we're in New York city with it now. So hopefully we can continue to grow it and get the game and get game and business out there even more. Bobby, did you know that Austin Mack is part of this team, former New York giant, <laughs> a former Ohio state Buckeye as well. So. Yeah. Austin Mack, my um, guy. This is where it's like me and like, I'm 30 years old and interviewing guys that are six years younger than me. I'm like, <laughs> you and Justin are talking about, I'm like, I have no idea. <laughs> what they're 
what they're talking about right now. Um, it's like I used to play Madden. Um, so f- <laughs> let's to we'll, we'll we'll finish off on some footballs. So listen, you know, I don't. I'm not sure many Giants fans, you know, watch my highlight. You know, like cut it, cut up your game versus the the, the Dolphins. Like for you know the thousands of people listening or watching. Like, what do you think? Like you bring as a running back. Like, like what do you like? How would you describe your skill set if you get like got like five bullet points? Yeah, yeah, I'm definitely very physical. Um, That's uh, noticeable. Yeah, I'm uh, very. I think I have really good speed. You know, I did a, I did do a four four seven uh, in my pro day. So I'm not, you know, I think I feel like that's overlooked sometimes for me. Um, and then at other times, you know, I think I, I think I'm good in pass protection. I feel like I'm a c- complete running back, and uh, you know, just given the right opportunity, I feel like I'll be able to show everything I can do. It's more, it's more. Let me show you guys rather than tell you at this yeah. point because, you know, I'm at year three in the league. Um, you know, lots of interviews, and you, you always say you always say the type of back you are. But I'm at a point in my career, I feel like where I just want to get out there and show people what I can do, and you know, well, lead the day. Justin can attest to this. We don't do. We try to not do a ton of player interviews because it's, a lot of them are boring and watered down. And it's like you know, a player may not be good, and you know, we're people are like oh, you know, if I defended you know certain player, like oh, you only like him because you had him on the show. But I, I will say, like, we have a, a private Patreon where it's like, hey, we don't tweet out everything. And it's like, man, I, I think you're going to compete to not only like make this roster but play. And it, it blows yeah. my mind that you haven't. I know Buffalo's got some good players ahead of you, and I'm. You know, for someone that was be signed to a futures contract, I'm really excited to see you grow, go into camp preseason, and I think you're going to make the roster, man. And I'm ex- I'm excited for your future. I appreciate that, man. I really do. You know, I I felt the support. You know, when I announced I was coming, uh, I've seen seen the Giants fans come in, and you know, everybody's excited. There's buzz around. There's Joe's doing the thing. You know, Dave just come in there. It's a lot. It's a lot to be excited for for the New York Giants right now. Yeah, and it's a you play a position where we see the undrafted guys, you know, make it a lot more than other positions, yeah. you know. So, um, it'd be a cool story if Joe Shane's first hire ends up being a, a real deal player for us. And you got a lot <laughs> going, you got a lot going on for you, man. So we appreciate you coming on. Um, we'll we'll talk soon, and maybe, maybe we'll uh, catch up in Daytona. I'm trying to convince Justin to come down next year for Daytona with us. Look, he's, man, he's more of a NASCAR fan than I am. I really don't I watch anymore besides NASCAR. Daytona. Really? Yeah. yeah. We uh, you got look. You guys shoot me a message, and we can talk, and I can get you on the pitch. It's no issue. Okay. All right, Mr. Big. Oh, boy. Uh, <laughs> it's pretty dope of you. Uh, all right, man. Uh, thanks again for coming on, and we'll, hey. we'll talk soon. Thanks, guys. Thank you to Antonio Williams for coming on the show. We're going to wrap up, but first we got to talk. Go tweet about- at him, uh, Talking Giants versus the World, please. Go tweet at Antonio Williams talking Giants versus the world. But first, before we wrap up, we got to talk about DraftKings Hoops fans. The latest offer from DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NBA, is too good to pass up. I'm talking. Love how the DraftKings ad read had talking in there because that's like what we do. Between the legs, 360 windmill good. That's how good DraftKings is. New customers can bet just $1 on any team and get $150 in free bets if they win. It's that simple. Bobby Skinner, I know, can, can you do a Between the Legs 360 windmill dunk? I can do a, uh, a Between the Legs layup. There you go. I You're, actually worked on that for a while. You can dunk? How How is your fist switch muscle fibers? Are you a fist switch muscle fiber fiber guy? No, they're really bad, but I can still do like a rim grazing dunk. Sure. DraftKings Sportsbook customers can also bet on the NBA with same-game parlays. Combine multiple bets from the same game for a bigger payout. The more legs you add, the more you can win. I, I've never understood the skin-in-the-game reference, even though I like it and I've been using it often in my daily life where it's like my skin in the game when I bet. So let's get some legs in the game as well. Betting terms. DraftKings is safe, secure, and reliable. Best of all, you can deposit and withdraw your cash whenever you want. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now with use promo code JOHNBOY. Bet just $1 on any NBA team and get $150 in free bets if they win. That's promo code JOHNBOY at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. Must be 21 or years or older and physically present in New York. Eligibility restrictions apply. Minimum $5 deposit. See DraftKings.com slash Sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text hope ny 467-369. My disclaimer was shorter than all of yours. Um, James Harden. Screw him. By the way, we kind of have some time. Do you want to fix racism? 
Hmm. I was thinking maybe we can, like, like a movie. You can go be like a teacher. And well, happy I did that for a year. I was did a teacher for a year. Sounds like you sucked at it. And I didn't fix the issue. Um. Sorry. All right. That's that's an. You got anything else? That's an episode. Friday. No. <laughs> Friday. Uh. We'll probably Positional do review. Positional review, giant stories. We kind of I forgot to do that in the last pod, but it was it was jam packed. It's okay. I think we're gonna do a beat reporter interview next Tuesday, um, so we, we'll try and get that lined up and, and look for. It. I mean, we're coming. We're I'm just anchoring down and draft stuff. Oh, and Wednesday is the post Senior Bowl pre free agency mock draft, and I only On do YouTube. four. Yeah, and so that's that's two. That's number two of four. There's the midseason one. There's the one to kick off draft month, and then the draft day one, which I don't even count that as like its own. I mean, that's not its own video. Um, so, uh, and you know that goes away quickly. You know, it, it's dated within 24 hours. So. Yeah, I can't wait to do my my one and only mock draft. That that's is, the way I would do it. That's yeah. the way we used to do it, and then we got bigger on YouTube and realized like, hey, it's something we probably got to utilize. Don't go. Cra- I don't want to go crazy on it. I'm not like I don't I'm not doing mock drafts every day, but it's like. Do do four. Do one midseason, one pre free agency, one draft month, and then uh one to one on draft day. And the draft day one is definitely the most. I mean, that's my favorite podcast of the year is draft the draft day wow. podcast because it's just so much work that goes into that that weekend. And it's like war, you know. It's like the you know Dumb and Dumber when they come up on the on the on the the pocket rock. It's like. We're there. Like it's it's so much <laughs> prep that goes into that day, and it feels good to like. Here's, you know, I always put together a speech. So, I'll get excited for the draft day podcast is what I'm saying. Yeah, still got about like, I don't know, f- most half of February, all of March, and basically all of uh, April. So yeah, essentially two and a half months till then. So, but th- but tune in t- until that point. All right, Justin. Anything else before we roll? No. Um. Have a good week, everybody. There you go. Have a good week. We usually wish to have a good weekend, but I guess we can tell people to have a good week. Yeah. Uh, so, right, we appreciate you guys. We'll see you on Friday. Until then, let's go big blue.